This is The Brandon Smith Show, and I'm your host, Brandon Smith. And the purpose of the show is one singular thing to help you live a life that much more free from dysfunction. And so our topic today, oh, bear with us, because here's our topic. Are you ready? Intimacy. We are, I, I bet I had you at intimacy. So we're going to talk about intimacy, how to do that better. And we're not going to talk about the touchy-feely kind of intimacy. We're going to talk about more of the relationship kind of intimacy. Because if we can master this, we can not only improve our lives personally, but also professionally. So we're going to dig into this. So this is one of our leadership therapy segments. And whenever we do these segments, I have my fantastic, amazing co-pilot, producer, Whitney Mendoza. Isaac's laughing at my compliments of Whitney in the background. Whitney, how are you? Great. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate your kind words. What's the edge? No, I was I was being serious with you. Look at my nose twitch. No, Isaac, you, I like, can't hear. You did it with like a big, bold eyes. Like, oh, was it Isaac Thanking that was you? Here? Yes. Not acknowledging Isaac oh, laughing in the oh, background. You're, oh, okay. Yeah. That's where the hey, edginess. Hey, co-pilot, can I get some wings? You can have wings. Yes. Can I have wings? Yes. Is that important to you? It's very important to me. Okay. Excellent. Well, we're going to talk about intimacy today. Because okay. this is a, this is a, uh, I think it's, we all would agree that it's important to us in life. And it's so we can walk through life with others and not kind of walk through alone. Um, it's interesting. I had, um, this topic became more of a pressing thing for me because I had a coaching uh, session not too long ago. And it turned out that this particular individual's challenge was they just have a hard time building relationships. And it really came down to intimacy. They just don't do intimacy well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so you, we probably know people that don't do intimacy well. Um, and that there's one, one, it's one thing to say that. It's another thing to say, okay, so how do you do it well? What is it? So I came up with, drum roll, a new formula, everybody. Hot off the press, new formula. That I may have called brilliant. She did. She did. I she did. called it brilliant. I am so excited. Okay, new formula. Hot off the press. We're going to talk about intimacy. But to do that and get the formula, kind of get us up to speed with the formula, I want to talk about the trust formula. So, Whitney, do you remember the trust formula? I don't have it memorized. That's why I gave it to you on a piece of paper. Am I allowed to look at it? Uh, now you are, because I just told everybody okay, you have it you. on the paper. Okay, wait, hang on. I've got two formulas. Don't you... do the second one. The second one's the okay, special one. Okay, but wait, one. I have a very good question. Are you telling me trust and intimacy kind of sort of go hand in hand? <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus. Baby, we're not going to go there yet. We're going to talk about trust. All right, I'm ready. First. I'm ready. So trust, Trust just read the formula. Just read the formula. Trust equals authenticity plus vulnerability times credibility. Don't forget the parentheses, please. Parentheses, authenticity and vulnerability are in parentheses. So trust equals authenticity. Plus vulnerability. In parentheses. In parentheses. Times. And then that sum times. Credibility. Credibility. That gets us trust. Okay, do you remember why it's a multiplication formula and not an addition formula? This is bonus points for you. Because you can't have one without the other. Say more about that. So if you have authenticity and vulnerability, but you don't have credibility, then you don't have trust. So if we put our math hats on for yes. all of our oh, friends God. out there listening. This is where I go downhill. No, this is a simple. This is basic math. Yep, still going downhill. So all of you that like mathematical equations... Okay, there are some of you out there listening, but if you don't like it, it's really simple. If you multiply anything times zero, what do you get? Zero. Yeah, that's, that's it. probably the only thing I remember. That's the well, that's all you got to know for the formula. And one plus one is two. Because if credibility goes to zero, then trust goes to zero. Okay, you can be as authentic and vulnerable. So you know, so I got I got um, between my my wife and I, we've got plenty of family members that have plenty of authenticity and vulnerability. <laughs> okay. I know what that and looks like. And they do not have a key to my house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No key to my house. This, there's that's no, a good one. Because there's no there's no credibility. Everyone listening was like, yep, they thought of that person. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no key to my house. And some of them don't even know my address. And that oh, is and okay. that is okay. 
Okay, plenty of authenticity, vulnerability, no credibility. So you need, so if either side goes to zero, now the same thing is true for the other side. If authenticity and vulnerability go to zero, there's no trust. You may have credibility, but you're, but what, what that looks like is you say to yourself, oh, I'm not really sure I know what's going on in her head or in his head. I'm not really sure I know their motives. And so we don't trust that person. And they may have credibility, may have a great title or a great resume, but we don't have that kind of window into how they're thinking. Okay. So one more important point around trust is, you know, credibility is a function over time, right? You build credibility over time. Proxies for credibility, in other words, like other things we can think of that fall under credibility, dependability, reliability, consistency, consistent performance. That's where you build credibility, okay? So that's our trust formula. And, and the, the final kind of summation of this whole thing is you don't have to be perfect on any of those scores. You can't just can't go to zero. So that's how you build trust. A little authenticity, vulnerability, and then mul multiply that times credibility. And people say, oh yeah, I trust her. I trust him. I get a window into kind of how they, how they think and, I, and I've seen their performance over time. Okay, so far so good? I'm good. Okay. I got this. Okay. Are we past the math? For this one. Okay. Okay. So then I get this client and I'm working with this client and he's, he, he has having issues. He's having challenges building relationships, both personally and professionally. Um, and it turns out it's really kind of an intimacy thing. Uh, and as I kind of experienced him, I thought to myself, light bulb moment. This could also be turned into a formula. So here it is. Here's intimacy. And then we'll talk about how you use this in professional and personal settings. Okay. So intimacy equals in parentheses. Okay. So another math, another multiplication formula, folks. In parentheses, authenticity plus vulnerability, in parentheses, just like trust, okay? Multiply times curiosity, not credibility, curiosity, okay? That's intimacy. So here's what I mean by that. Authenticity, vulnerability is your willingness to expose yourself to another person in a real way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just kind of in a real way sharing what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and you might even put yourself out on a limb, share some things that you're not quite sure how that person's gonna respond to, but they're real, they're true, you're being vulnerable, okay? And that's that's part of intimacy, because that's your willingness to go deeper. Because if another visual for intimacy, intimacy is depth. You're trying to go deeper with another person. And then you can go as deep as you want, depending upon the relationship you have with that person, but intimacy is depth. So one person's willingness to go deep. And then curiosity, is the other person's willingness to take the, a person deep. My, willing, my willingness and ability to ask you questions to learn more about you versus just look at you on the surface and not care. That's curiosity. And in real intimacy, in, in personal relationships, both parties have to do both. They have to be willing to go deep and they also have to be willing to and, and interested in going deep with another person. So curious about you and then your willingness to go deep. And your curiosity about me and my willingness to go deep. Okay, make sense? Told you folks, brilliant. So there, there it is. Yeah. A nice, simple way. So it's a way to then look at and say, am I, so there's pieces to this. Am I authentic? Do I really just share who I am? Do I not mm -hmm. put on mm -hmm. pretenses in an appropriate way? Am I vulnerable? Am I willing to share like more about my own personal story or um, half-baked thoughts or ask for help. Those are all forms of vulnerability. And then curiosity, do I actually try and dig in and learn about other people? So which piece was your client missing? Curiosity. Mm. He was actually really, really good at being real and vulnerable with me, but I think he's a, he was a bit narcissistic. Mm. He wasn't interested in other people and that was what was holding him back. So he would just kind of, he would just say what he wanted to whenever he wanted to, super authentic and vulnerable, but he wasn't interested in learning about what another person needed or wanted and how to adjust that. It was just more about, it was kind of about him all the time. Interesting. And then I have some people who are super, super curious all the time, um, but they're not willing to be authentic and vulnerable. They almost use it as a deflection. Like if I keep asking you questions about you, then you won't bother to ask me questions about me and I can kind of, Hide. So do you get to tell us how we build this? Which, which one are you circling? All you're, you're putting the, your finger. The all formula the... itself. Sorry, with my handy dandy paper here. Are we going to look at how to build these? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So we'll start with 
You tell me. You want to start with personal or you want to start with professional? Let's, we can start with professional and work down to okay. personal. Okay. So we'll start with professional. So what this is getting at is professional intimacy. Okay, so before people get freaked out by me talking about intimacy at work, okay, here's what I mean by this. When we're talking about professional intimacy, let me break down the two definitions. Intimacy is sharing with others what you thinking, feeling, and wanting. So thoughts, feelings, needs, and wants in a kind of an honest way okay, with another person. Okay, um, Professional, that, that descriptor is an important word. With boundaries is what professional means. So you don't need to be in the workplace. You're not needing to share everything about going on in your life with other people. That's not professional intimacy. That's oversharing. That's poor boundaries. Professional is, I got, I got boundaries, so I'm not going to talk about everything. But there's value in going deeper with the people I work with. And what they found was in the highest performing teams, when Google's done some of their studies, and in their study, they found psychological safety was key. And the trigger for that was people being, a, the, the manager being a little more vulnerable, sharing more what was going on with her or him, their thinking. So it created a context for everyone on the team to be like, okay, like I see they're not going to punish me. I can kind of all in engage. So it makes a difference when we talk about in the professional environment. So, uh, and, and why this also matters is it's particularly important if you've got politics in your workplace or other people you need to influence. So if you're in a role where politics matters, and so for most organizations, that's a director level and above. Once you hit director level, that's where the politics start. That's where the po political game begins. You got to spend at least 10% of your time managing politics, and then it just gets more and more and more. Then you, you, then you really need to be thinking about how do I build professional intimacy with all the other peers and other political players. So I, so I have that connection with them and I understand them and they understand me and we're going to work better together. Otherwise, bad stuff can happen. So that's kind of a context of kind of where we use this. Okay. So you have, I'm, I'm looking at the break and I, we're about to go into it. So before we take a break and we come back, I want to dive into how we do this a little bit more. Uh, any, you have any final questions for me before the break? We got like 40, 40 seconds, 39 I was going to say, you just wasted five of them. I'll oh, wait for the break. That was hurtful. She just said I wasted. I get brilliant and, and then wasted time in this within like I'm five minutes apart. I'm being authentic. I'm being vulnerable. You're not being curious. Oh. I am very curious <laughs> about what's going to come next after this break. <laughs> oh, well played. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. When we come back, we will talk about how do you build intimacy. Hey everyone, this is Brandon. I hope your 2018 is everything you'd hoped it would be. That said, we could all use a tune-up. Go to my site, theworkplacetherapist.com, www.theworkplacetherapist, all one word, .com, for a library of resources for you. You can find past shows, blog posts on navigating workplace dysfunction, and even my TED Talk on the contagiousness of emotions in the workplace. And that's not all. There are the Workplace Happiness Workbooks to help you find happiness in your job, and even a tab to Ask the Therapist, where you can ask me anything on your mind. We all need a tune-up once in a while. Get yours today. Welcome back to the Brandon Smith Show. I am your host, Brandon Smith, and today we are talking about intimacy and how do we build intimacy, both professionally and personally. Okay, so right before the break, I hinted. I said, okay, for intimacy professionally, we stayed on the professional bucket first. I said, all right, so this is really important if you've got, if you're in a political situation, you got peers or other folks you need to kind of uh, strengthen your relationship with. Yes. And you'd ask me, well, how do you do this? How do you, how do, you do this in, in different situations? Right. And so for the, the starting point for developing intimacy with another person is curiosity. That's the starting point. Okay. Okay. Because what you're doing is if you don't start with curiosity, you just start with authenticity, vulnerability, it's still about you. And so curiosity is your invitation to the other person to join you. 
Okay. So you're inviting them to kind of walk with you. All right. Now, as a good mentor of mine said, people can always decline the invitation, but you're inviting them to walk with you. Okay. So what does that look like very practically? It means you invite a coworker, you invite one of these people out to, out to coffee or lunch, and you just, you get curious. You need to come with a list of questions, questions you're going to ask about her or him. It could be about their goals for their department. It could be about kind of what their career path has been up to this point, learning a little bit more about their, their story and where they want to go. And you're hoping from them that they're going to respond in a way that is authentic and vulnerable. So they'll, they'll t- tell you a little more of their story. They'll, they'll talk about some of the things that they're struggling with or their goals. Uh, and the, the usually what will then happen, what will then transpire over that coffee or lunch is they'll go, huh. Well, what about you? And they'll flip it back, which is how okay. intimacy is supposed to work. Mm-hmm. It's a back and forth thing. And once you know a little bit more about that person, then you learn how to move and navigate a little bit more effectively to align with them. And most importantly, they feel valued and heard because you put forth that effort. So far, so good? Good. Okay. Any, got this. Any, any thoughts or questions? You got it. I'm hoping it's simple. Yes. I was trying to make it simple. It is. That's good. It's asking the right questions. It is all about the questions. It's all about the questions. So you don't, you don't in the workplace, you don't do this without a set of questions. You should have a set of questions in your mind that you're going to come in with and, and ask. And so, uh, for example, I always have sets of questions that I ask whenever I'm interviewing either a new client or um, when I'm trying to navigate around politics. And so I've got my set of questions. I always, I always like to ask about someone's story. What's been your journey up to this point? And more often than not, people will happily tell you. And that's a great way for me to get to see who they are as a human being and not just what they do. Right. You can break down a lot of walls by knowing someone's story. So very, very powerful. There's there's tremendous power in that. But I also like to know where they're going. So whenever I'm meeting someone one-on-one, I almost always will bring my magic, either my magic crystal ball or my magic wand with me. And so you have one of those. I have. I have both. That's interesting. They're phenomenal. Be careful. I have some questions after my magic, the show. My magic wand. I used it to change things. Ding, ding. That's a little <laughs> bit too authentic. <laughs> oh, it's being too, too authentic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my magic crystal ball. I'll start with that one. I always bring it along. So it's a set of questions I always ask, and this one is. Okay, I got my magic crystal ball. If I put it down in front of you, and other than being invisible, what my magic crystal ball always shows is perfect. So if you look out five years from now, what would you want to see? What are your goals? What would you want what would perfect look like? And depending upon the person, I might slightly tweak the angle, but it's a visioning question. So it helps me see where they want to go. So I know how to align with them. And then my magic wand, so my crystal ball is for vision, my magic wand is for fixing stuff. Let's say, all right, now if I take my magic crystal ball away and give you my magic wand and you could wave it and fix anything or anybody, what would you fix or who would you fix? And it'll tell you a lot about kind of what are some of their pain points. Yeah. And, and so through that with work, you learn a little bit more about their goals, obstacles, what matters to them, and you build that professional intimacy. Not that hard. It just requires intentionality. Yeah. But you have to then also be prepared to do the same thing. Because remember, intimacy is a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. You've got to be able to, if they turn around and flip it, you can't go, oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> things, are, things are good. You can't do that. You've got to really be willing to, to be honest and open. Okay, I have a quick question. Excellent. Because I feel like today, time could make one of these go to zero, right? So everybody's like, great, I don't have time to go out to lunch or breakfast with everyone on my team. Um, what is a way to maybe com- combat that? You schedule, schedule it. So what, okay. I, what I'm now, now I've got some clients doing, because I have a lot of clients that have this challenge of needing to build these relationships, mm-hmm. but not having the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm, having, I'm, I'm using the example of typical traditional consultants to help them think about their time. So your traditional consultant that is 100% travel, they hit the, hit the road either Sunday or Monday morning, and they come back Thursday night. And then they're in their home office, wherever they're based out of, on Friday, and that's when they do paperwork, and they do lunches, and they do other meetings with other people within the firm to stay connected. Okay. Because back come Monday, they're back out on the road again. Yeah. 
and that people will forget who they are. Okay. So I am actually then just using that model and prescribing, make it every Friday. Every Friday, schedule a lunch with somebody. Okay. And just make it, that's your day where you do that. And it can be with people on your team, it could be peers, but it's a great way for you to learn more about them, them to learn more about you and kind of strengthen those relationships. Because you're right, time is the big blockage to this. Yeah. So put it on your calendar. Uh, and I've got some clients that ha- actually have the the wonderful gift of having some assistants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so they're they're having actually having their assistants go out and not only block the time, but go find the people. But you got to come prepared with questions. Right. The set of questions is really important um, when it comes to the professional side of this. Okay. So far, so good? Got it. Okay, so we still got time. We got to talk about the personal side. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's say, it. let's say, yeah, I want to do the same thing. I want to have more intimate relationships, either with friends or significant others. Like I want to deepen those. It's the same kind of drill. You know, you're you you ideally you want to start off with curiosity. So in coming with some questions, you might say, hey, how was? It can be as simple as how was your day. And if you want a good. Um, Follow-up questions. So one more important element around curiosity that I think I, I need to hit. Curiosity is not about asking someone the first question. So even this even replies professionally. When you come with your question, whatever it is, that's not curiosity. That alone. It's the follow-up question that is curiosity. So that shows that you are listening? Yes, and you're mm. interested. So you're willing to get dig in deeper. Okay. So for example, if I said... Um, hey Whitney, what's the one thing you are super excited about this year? My Dwight mug. So then she says her Dwight mug, which is a weird answer, but that's okay. Oh, did I, I see? Was that too authentic? That was too authentic, I think. Um, so then if I came back with her and said the worst phrase in the modern American language and said, oh, good for you. Am I being curious? No, you're being offensive. Yeah. because So for those of you that use the term good for you, I would encourage you to stop using that. And the Brandon Smith bobblehead is shaking in agreement. Because good for you, what it really says is, huh, that's interesting. You seem really excited about that. I could care less. Let's talk about something I really want to talk about. So good for you is actually a transition phrase that you use to change the subject. Shows not curiosity because you're not honoring what the person said and then going deeper so what would you say when i said i'm excited about my dwight mug in this case i would say oh yeah that's a super cool mug what is it about that mug you're so excited about and i would say it's got my picture on it and i would say false (laughs) there's a mug actually does say false but the point is you're going in deeper you're asking yeah, we, a follow-up. We had a good dialogue there. You're, you're having a, you're having, you're acknowledging what the person said, and then you're asking a follow-up question. Yeah. If you don't know what follow-up question to ask, take this right out of the therapist playbook. It's a great follow-up question. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. Yes. You got you got points. Just bring in our A game more, again. More bonus points. Tell me more about that. That's all you gotta say. And every single time in human history that's ever been asked to somebody, they've responded with something. No one's ever said, I got, I got nothing else. That's all I got. I bought this for your show. All you got to do is say, ah, cool. Tell me more about that. And they will. They always will. So you're, you're trying to go deeper with how you ask those questions. So that can be simple. When it's per- personal intimacy, that's really what you're doing. You're just sitting down with a, with a significant other. Start opening question could be, tell me about your day. And then you can dig in further by saying, what'd you like about your day? What was your best part? Well, anything you would change? If you could wave a magic wand and change it, what would, you, what would you change? You're just getting curious and you're just listening and you're giving them space to be authentic and vulnerable. Okay, You're giving them space to do that and then you're honoring it, which is important. Here's where you can screw this up personally and professionally too. They say something like, oh yeah, well, my day, this happened. And then you go, oh, well, that's like my day. And then da 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 pretty soon you're talking about your day. Don't yeah. take it away. Give them the space and let them sit in that space and talk and honor what they're saying. That's how you develop intimacy. You leave it about them and you just listen. If you spend 15 minutes a day, I often would prescribe this to my students. If you spend 15 minutes a day um, interviewing your significant other as if they're the most interesting person in the world, that's a guarantee you'll have a long lasting intimate relationship. 
just every day, just, just interview him. Like, what was, what'd you like about today? Anything you change? And just listen to him. It can be when you're in the car, it could be over the phone, but spending that time. It's one of the reasons why when you look at professions like investment banking or a lot of legal jobs, when you're in high, high profile firms where it's billable hours and uh, some consulting, you get really high divorce rates because people do not dedicate the time every day to connect. And so divorce rates are through, through the roof. They, and often you'll see the divorce rates start to spike around the kind of the mid fifties or 50 year olds hmm. because uh, the kids would be grown, they move out of the house, and then the couple looks at each other and is like, I don't even know you because we really haven't talked about anything other than the kids for the last 30 years. Yeah. So I want to move on. So it's, it's, a, it's a really kind of healthy thing. Uh, now, what makes it hard in personal life, um, is, so all that's good, that's, those are muscles to strengthen it, mm-hmm. is curiosity. Mm-hmm. What makes it hard is the vulnerability. When you say to someone, I'm not getting a need met. That's really hard to do because there's always the possibility in the back of all of our minds that they say, well, too bad for you because I'm not going to meet that need. And then you have to make a, make a choice around that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so intimacy is not, a, it's not for the faint of heart. It requires work. It requires a lot of courage and intentionality. But when you do it right, it allows us to have deeper, stronger relationships with the people that matter to us in our world, whether it's personally or professionally. Okay, so what do you think? Can I fit in a quick question before we close out the show? Okay. What would you recommend if, let's say, we're attempting to do this and the other party kind of resists? They just don't want to go there. They're making it a little bit difficult. But it's someone that maybe you see every day or you work with every day or your spouse and you live with them. If it's someone that you work with... um, you give them more time. Okay. So if it's someone you work with, just give more time. It could be that just that they, they just have a lot of walls and they're protecting themselves. And over time, they'll soften. And it could even be cultural things too. I think that's important too. I have a, uh, there's a client of mine who worked in a Scandinavian country uh, for many years. And this particular country that he was in, it was, it was Finland. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he talked about, he said, you know, the, the Finns are very kind of a, a stoic culture so they don't open up with people that they work with and really people in general until after like a couple of years of really working with them and then they might share some personal things mm-hmm. so give them some space because there because there could be some differences and just but 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 be be persistent and be curious eventually you'll get points for that mm-hmm. if it's personal and they're not opening up you do something that in the therapy world we call attend to the obvious so you, you say to the person, hey, I notice every time we go down this path, you resist and you won't go there. And, I, and I'd really like to learn more about you and hear about this, but this, this, this is holding us back. I'm curious what that's about. Is there, and is there anything I could do to help you get there? Because I really want to grow our relationship. So you kind of attend okay. to it and then you, you explain your intent. And then lastly, the reason why we do all this is so we can not only so we can connect, um, but remember, in absence of communication, we assume the worst. If we don't dig in and learn about other people, we right. fill it in with beliefs and assumptions. And they're typically not good. We assume scary things about other people mm-hmm. because we try and protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that limits our ability to be not only have those relationships, but move forward with other people. We get end up with political stuff and fighting at home and all the other kind of things that we don't want. Brilliant. Probably got another brilliant, folks. That was like three. Yes. Yes. It's good stuff. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for listening. I hope today was helpful for you as you think about strengthening your relationships, both at work and at home. And of course, keep up our fight against dysfunction uh, every week as we drop a new show at 930 Eastern uh, Sundays. And uh, follow us on facebook.com forward slash Brandon Smith WPT for workplace therapist or Twitter at the WP th- at the WP therapist. If I cannot speak so fast. And of course, check out my website, theworkplacetherapist.com. Google The Workplace Therapist and you'll find me. I'm just hanging out there with content and other resources there to help you and make your life better. So until our paths cross again and until the next show, have a great week and an awesome life. Don't touch the bobbleheads. Don't touch the bobbleheads. <laughs>